with the 138th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. The Kansas City Chiefs select the Jarius Sneed, defensive back, Louisiana Tech. Hey everybody, and welcome into the Draft Day 3 edition of The Breakdown. I'm your host, Matt McMullen, and in this episode, we're walking through each of the Chiefs' three draft picks on Saturday. Speedy, playmaking defensive back, Legereus Sneed, pass rusher, Mike Dana, and cornerback, Bo Pete Keys. We'll hear from each of those guys here in just a minute, but first, tonight's episode is brought to you by Kansas City Southern. Kansas City's hometown railroad delivering essential goods to support communities throughout the U.S. and Mexico. All right, let's start with the Chiefs' first selection of day three. Six foot tall, 192 pound defensive back, Legereus Sneed. He was a three year starter at Louisiana Tech, appearing in 51 games over his four years in school while earning all conference and team captain honors as a senior. He recorded 28 passes defensed, eight interceptions, and six tackles for loss during his career. And get this, he tallied three pick sixes in that time as well. No player in the FBS had more over the last four years. So, with those ball skills and all those touchdowns, it makes some sense that Sneed actually wanted to be a wide receiver out of high school and considers himself a pretty good one. It's something that he believes helps him on game day. Me, me knowing what receivers, you know, want and what they do, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a good receiver as in, like, at practice, after practice, I'll go a receiver. Me and Amik will, you know, go out and just do press coverages and stuff. I think I'm a very good receiver, which helped me on the defensive side, which... I know what they want. I know what they're looking for and slow them down. Sneed was referencing fellow Louisiana Tech corner Amik Robertson, who actually got drafted by the Las Vegas Raiders, so he'll be seeing a lot of him moving forward. But anyway, I think possessing that wide receiver mentality is valuable, especially when considering Sneed's elite speed. He ran a 4.37 40-yard dash at the Combine, which was the fourth fastest of any participant. And he tested really well in other areas too, such as the broad jump and vertical jump. The guy is a freak athlete with ball skills, and in addition to that, he's versatile. He was a corner throughout his time at Louisiana Tech before switching to safety this past year. And according to Pro Football Focus, he's truly played all over the place. He can play slot corner, free safety, outside corner, or line up down in the box, giving the Chiefs lots of different ways to use his skill set. Kansas City loves defensive backs like that, and Tyron Matthew is probably the standard in the game today for versatile defenders in the secondary. And as a Louisiana kid, it's no surprise that Sneed can't wait to play with the Honey Badger. You know, I love his energy. I start watching him. And when I was growing up, you know, I always watched him. I like the energy that he played with, the fire that he had inside of him, and the energy that he brings on the field, you know. And, you know, he was, they doubted him. But he he was resilient. He overcame it, you know. And I like that about him. He, he stayed down and got to work every day. And it's going to be a great time, you know, to play with somebody like that who who going to motivate you, you know. To be better, you know, just soak all of it in from him, someone who, who's know the game more than I can, you know, just to help my game improve a lot. And speaking of playing with stars, Sneed was asked how facing an MVP quarterback like Patrick Mahomes in practice will help him progress as a player. The answer, a lot. Uh, I think it's going to help me a lot, you know. First, you know, it starts in the film room. Study guys, that's where it all starts at first, you know, then translate to the field. You know, a guy like Pat Mahomes, that's a different like type of quarterback, man. He he'll look this way, but he'll throw the ball to someone else. You know that's very different. And now and now in these days, but you know just study film. You know practice make better. You know and it's it's a blessing to have a quarterback like that. You know. Now let's move on to Michigan pass rusher Mike Dana, who the Chiefs selected at pick number one seventy seven. The six foot two, two hundred and fifty seven pound Dana was a grad transfer for the Wolverines and tallied thirty eight tackles, three sacks, and a forced fumble in his lone season at Michigan, contributing mostly as a reserve. But before heading to Ann Arbor, this guy was one of the more prolific pass rushers in the country at Central Michigan. In his three years for the Chippewas, Dana racked up 28 tackles for loss, 15 sacks, and four forced fumbles. In 2018, his best season, he graded out as one of the best pass rushers in the nation, according to Pro Football Focus, and earned a spot on PFF's All-American team after recording 15 tackles for loss on the year. The guy was a stud, and while his numbers at Michigan weren't quite that prolific, the Chiefs still felt really good about the guy they were getting in the fifth round. Here's what area scout Pat Sperduto had to say about Dana and how he thinks this pass rusher can fit in Kansas City. Yeah, I did him. I wrote him last year as when he was at Central Michigan because I thought he was a junior that was going to come out. They had a, like a really mm-hmm. disappointing season last year, but he was, I mean, he had nine and a half sacks last year, right. meaning 18 when he was at Central. 
uh, I have a, a couple really good friends there and they thought he was going to leave. And um, so I had written him and uh, I was like, man, this kid, he's going to come out. He's going to, you know, I, we would have, you know, he would have been a draft pick last year as well. Um, his role at Michigan was a little bit different. So when he gets to Michigan, they kind of, and they do this with a lot of their players. They have multiple roles. They play multiple, um, multiple spots. And um, his role there was, was unique for him. It's something that he hadn't done where he, he, he uh, stemmed down inside and played over a guard a little bit. And I think he's probably more natural outside uh, as an edge guy. And um, so he, he really, and he's a great, great kid, like a great kid. Like all my friends that are up there, one of their favorite kids and, and um, nothing but great things was said about the person uh, at Central. And then it was the same when you walked into Michigan, it was like, oh, he's just, you know, a rare character. And no matter where the Chiefs intend on playing him, it sounds like Dana is up for the challenge. Here's how he described what he brings to the field. Uh, versatility to the game, you know, being able to pass rush or if I got to drop back in coverage and do that. So, you know, and I'm a hard-nosed football player. So he's just, you know, bringing my physicality to the field every single time I step on. So it's first things first to me. I think what's also interesting about Dana is that he doesn't at all regret his decision to attend Michigan as a grad transfer. Sure, the numbers were down but it provided him with a valuable experience against top flight competition that will undoubtedly help him at the next level. Dana discussed that on Saturday while also looking forward to playing with another Michigan alum, Frank Clark. Well, you know, at that year at Michigan, I learned a lot of, you know, technique and fundamentals, you know, and just like, you know, rehearsing that over and over again each week and, you know, mastering it at a certain point. It was great. You know, that year was very beneficial to me. I wouldn't change it for nothing. Then you also, I always watch Frank Clark film and, you know, just to play with him is, it's a dream come true, you know. The Chiefs keep adding Louisiana kids who idolize Tyron Matthew. So it's only fair that Frank Clark finally gets a former Wolverine on the squad. But as I say that, Kansas City drafted yet another Louisiana product to wrap up the draft in cornerback Bo Pete Keys, who started 23 of 24 games over the last two seasons at Tulane with 85 tackles, 18 passes defensed, and two picks. The Chiefs actually traded into the seventh round to draft keys because, as area scout Willie Davis put it, there would have been a bidding war for his services had he gone unpicked. So, according to Willie, it didn't take much to convince Brett Veach to trade back in. It was easy. We wasn't getting this kid in, in free agency. Um, it was going to be a bidding war, and it was going to be a high bidding war for this kid in free agency. So, to get back, to jump back in in the seventh round and get to get him like that, that was big for us because. It was teams going to come after this kid. And like I said, if he would have tested, this kid probably would have been drafted in, in like the fifth round, if not the fourth. So it was not a, it, it was not a, a long conversation to get back up. And here's what I love about Keys. He wants to be the best, and he is not afraid to say it. He was a basketball-first athlete until his junior year of high school, so football is still relatively new. But he doesn't care about that or that he's a seventh-round pick. This dude believes in himself. I started playing my junior year. I ended up not playing my freshman and sophomore year, and I feel like it was the greatest move that I ever did. Uh, you know, once I got on the field, it was a great experience, and I began to get the exposures, and I knew sooner that I uh, transitioned to college. And just being a college player and learning more about defenses and more about football, it shaped me into a better football player as well. And I know that I got drafted in the se seventh round, I feel like, but I'm just ready to get on board and ready to hit the field and do everything that I show everyone that I am potentially will be the best corner in the league soon. You have to like that confidence, and honestly, you need that if you're a young guy coming in trying to prove yourself. And get this, his uncle loves the Chiefs. I don't remember how it happened, but I know ever since I was a kid, I played with the Chiefs in like a Pee Wee League, and I knew that he loved the Chiefs from that point forward. And as I got older, I started seeing a lot of Chiefs stuff around the house. So I was like, are you really a Chiefs fan? And he was like, yeah, that's my team. And so from that point, I knew he was a huge Chiefs fan. And when they won the Super Bowl, man, did I get a lot of calls from him. I mean, what are the odds? That's just awesome. As pumped as Bo Pete was on Saturday, I have to imagine his uncle was on another level. All right, to wrap things up, I'm really excited about the six guys Brett Veach brought in for this year's class. From Clyde edwards Elaire at pick number 32 to Bo Pete Keys in the seventh round, Kansas City added some depth in areas they could use it, such as tailback, linebacker, the offensive line, and the secondary. 
We'll of course have to wait and see how these guys pan out in the long run, but the combination of pure athleticism and production is what stands out to me from this group. And at the end of the day, the Chiefs are a better team now than they were on April 22nd. That's all I have for this one, everybody. Thanks so much for listening and following along with all of our draft coverage throughout the weekend. I had a blast, and I hope you did too. Until next time, this is Matt McMullen signing off.